2022. As we're entering the drafting phase here for game number one, match number two between Team Hawk as well as RSGPH. Let's just jump and uh, yeah, focus on towards the drafts here, ladies and gentlemen. Team Hack will have the blue side, RSGPH now will have the red. Team Hack, they up for in the Kai, for in the Kai ban. Wow, RSGPH, they will go for that 1-1 one, one ban. So, they're still testing the waters here, it seems like. No particular respect bans when the body suffers, just yet. Oh, as I said though, so, Benedetta has been banned. Benedetta banned away here in the first phase. And this is starting to be a common trend here, really. Just signifying the switch in meta. And as you can see here, RSGPH with the next ban, they could opt for a Valentina this time around. Or perhaps go for a Paquito ban, denying it away from a Team Hack. Uh-oh, it's gonna be a very interesting interesting approach here from both teams. Team Hawk taking Sir, their time, as well as, of course, Your RSGPH earlier. Well, they are for a Fanny ban. Now Team Hack, they're in the hot seat. What will they ban last here for the first phase? A lot of heroes are still open, and Kadida will it be their last ban, saying, what are you going to do? Valentina and Fermis, both are still open. Are you going to trade it? Are you going to ban it uh, Ban it away? Let's see. I have a fun fact. Oh, tell me. The Kadida ban coming in from Team Hawk is because Exort is a top global Kadida player. Wow, so already respect shown by Team Hawk. That Bandetta ban as well. I mean, as we all know in this current patch, that Bandetta is a very... Very flexible hero, very deadly as well. So, a lot of uh, focus is on that hero. But, yeah, good fun fact there. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna see the next ban here coming through from the side of RSG Philippines. Are they gonna be banning away the Valentina? Denying it away from none other than Min, who has found a lot of success on that hero. And the I answer found, is I no. Found. It's actually gonna be a Gushin ban taking it away here. And that leaves open the Valentina to be picked up for the Malaysian representatives. So it is get confirmed. Most likely, there's going to be a Valentina Fairness trade here in our first opening <laughs> game between Team Hack and as well as RSGPH. Valentina will be picked up by Hack, but now the question stands: RSGPH will they pick up the Fairness? And if they do, what will be combined? What will they combine it with? for first pick. Mm, Grok? That's the question. I bit. mean, first pick, we usually see the Grok and the Faramis, but is that an Indo meta or is that like an international meta? I'm not really sure what RSGPH want to go for here. We do still have the Beatrix if they want to prioritize that or even the Cho and even the Bakito and the Akai. That's still left open as well. Mm, we can see here RSGPH, two heroes. What are they going to opt for? I feel like just go for the Faramis raid and perhaps a he good hero. Yeah, you're right. They might pick up a marksman here early, but Ooh. no, of course, securing marches early is gonna be the way here for Irad and of course a hero potentially for light. We saw lights on this show a couple of days ago, and boy, oh boy, it's yeah, just amazing. Uh, this is huge, right? I mean, Irad on his power pick, who's the Mardis, who. Is insane with his stacks he's able to have really high attack speed and the attack speed can also convert onto damage which makes him a really good prio hero in that jungle position and of course securing the hero for light definitely very scary but that does kind of limit their flex potential unless this martis goes into the exp lane that isn't too common but in return we do have a leo mord being picked up here for team hack as well as the atlas so they're going for full Engage full team fight with the Atlas being picked up. A lot of CC, very different to the Cho, who only has a Come one on, source. Wow, CC. Which, yeah, which is quite interesting, right? Because Martis, as we all know, has a lot of immunity, has a lot of disengage as well, and technically a lot of anti CCs. But Team Hack responds it with a very heavy crowd control within that Atlas. But RGPH, they do not matter, they do not care. They do not go for that Diggy Insta pick. Alp, actually, they go for the Claude pick. Saying again, we're gonna go heavy, dive, dive heavy as well with Joe, with Martis, and as well as Claude in the mid game. Oh, the team fight is gonna be very interesting. It's gonna be nasty. It is. It's gonna be chaos. Woo! And it's interesting, right? Because Atlas actually does like dive centric heroes, but of course, 
because of the Martis pickup, it's going to be a little bit different, the dynamic. He's not going to be the one getting caught out because he does have that anti-CC immunity coming through. But now, we're going to see and jump into the second phase as Irithel is going to be the choice of ban here. Very interesting for that gold lane. How will Team Hack respond to this? Are they going to start prioritizing taking away that mid lane, perhaps? I think they should go for the mid lane ban. Um, the question is actually, do they want to waste a DK ban here? Because looking at RSGPH, they actually might actually go for the DK, but then again... But they picked up the Cho. That's true, but it can be put in the EXP though, technically, so... That's the, that's the question, but it seems like Team Hack, what they're saying, we're not too concerned of the Diggy, we are more concerned of that mid lane, so they are going to ban that Yeeve out, limiting here Exort's hero goal. So at this point, Exort is left with who? Lilia, Lilia Farsa, Farsa, and Faramis. Faramis, you're right. Faramis is still open to pick up, but we'll see exactly what strategy that they have in store for us. RSG Philippines, are they going to ban away the Leslie this time around? Ooh, you're right. Leslie is still up and available. And as we all know, that Claude is a... Well, no. That Leslie is a counter towards that Claude. So, last ban. They will need commit on towards that Leslie. Makes sense. Two marksmen here. Full committed on towards the marksman area. Yeah, that leaves what? Beatrix... That's it, Beatrix. Is Lilia is the ban. We mentioned this. The next choice was either the Lilia or the Farsa and the Faramis. So they have limited his heroes. And now he's forced onto perhaps someone that we don't commonly see unless they want to go for a Faramis. But with this composition, do you think it'll work? Because Faramis will force the team to kind of clump together. And that's exactly what the Atlas wants. Maybe though, but if we're talking about mobility, M Martis, Cho, and as well as Claude, they have a very high mobility and of course anti-CC. So against an Atlas, they might actually not be too worried. Again, uh, will they go for that Faramis is a very tough question here. Do they want to go for the pickoffs? Do they want to go for the team fight here? But th uh, there you go, the answer, Julian will fill right. that mid lane position. You're right, Julian. Why didn't we think of that? Okay, well, perhaps in MPLI, we haven't seen too much of Julian. The last person to use it was Udil, and then he lost, but someone else used it, and it actually worked out. So, not a great win rate. It does work depending on the pilot, but against the composition that Team Hawk has actually brought to the table, do you think it might work out? Looking at their composition, I gotta be honest, I think it actually might work out. Crowd control, the uh, that he brings, and of course the uh, escapability that Julian has within his arsenal is actually might work, right? I mean, again, for an Atlas, it's gonna be so hard catching these four heroes here. Joe, a lot of anti CC marches. Claude with that BMI, and Julian is also a hero that is very hard to catch. But Team Hack, they add another source of a tanky unit within that Marshall. And of course, that Beatrix to add more DPS and variety. So who's going to go into the ESP lane Masha. against someone like Masha? Oh, Uranus, uh, Esme. Who works well? I mean, Masha is so tanky. Masha is very tanky indeed. But their source of damage oh output God, in the mid game is off. okay. But there you go. The answer, Nats, will play that Esmeralda in the EXP. So it's quite clear, right? Team Hawk here, they want to go for that team fight front to back. RSG though, I feel like they're they, going dive. They're going full dive here. Five members can all dive. We're going to see, right? Because with full dive, they're going to have a limited amount of range. And that actually might be a problem going against someone like the Atlas who has the Fatal Links, who actually prefers dive heavy compositions. Well, let's see here, right? The 10 heroes that has been drafted by their coaches. We'll see. Land of Dawn, game one between Team Hack and as well as RSGPH. Who will grab the first game? Who will strike first as we are now waiting for the portal to enter the Land of Dawn? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear your support in the live chat, in the live comments. Spam it below. At Land of Dawn, we go for game one.
Which composition do you guys favor more? Yeah. I think that's something Sharing. that me and Gani would love to see in the live chat as well as we're going straight into the first game. And as you can see, I mentioned it, right? I mentioned that we weren't going to see conventional picks in that jungle position and non-conventional picks we see. Martis in the jungle as well as Leo Mord. And one thing that I'd like to note from the side of Team Hack is the fact that they need to be able to snowball from that early game. I think that's one of the main derivatives and main winning condition for Team Hawk in order for this Leo Mort to have an impact when it comes down to the game, especially looking at the emblem that he's opted for. Yeah, I mean, realizing that Leo Mort is going to be so hard to create an impact if he's behind, that should be the main objective, the main concern for the side of Team Hack now. We are now seeing a rotation here. Oh, Mart is sneaky. They're already invading the jungles of the side of Team Hack. So his pathing is quite unique. Ooh, so aggressive here in the top lane. You can see that Lola is already going to be the main target. He gets caught kind of low as it seems like they are going to be prioritizing that gold buff in the top side for Irad to take. But in terms of spells, we don't see anything too out of the box here. But one thing that I'd like to note, there is a sense of respect coming in from Kusei as he has actually picked up that Purify Emblem. Kind eh, of spell. Yeah, kind of forced, right? I mean, against an Atlas, kind of... Has to, you kind of have to uh, put that Purify in, but then again, uh, actually, Claude is a very hero, uh, a hard hero to catch, but he wants that extra security here in the gold lane. So, so now Temple has quite go gone down slow, but Turtle is up here. So Turtle is up here, so we'll see here. Perhaps the first action. Yeah, we can expect things to go a little bit crazy, but remember, Min has not reached level 4, so he doesn't have the Fatal Links coming into this next skirmish, as both of the teams are going to be dancing around this turtle bow. Oh my god, Light! He goes in once again for that combo, and First Blood is going to fall into his hands. Oh my god, Arad picking up the kill, and now Lola trying to deal damage to the backside. Oh, Nats though, catching Min! And this might be disaster for Team Hawk. Two members retreating as Gary is struggling to find the steel. Irad will comfortably pick up the turtle. RSGPH, a very good exchange, falls to their favor. Yeah, unfortunately, RSGPH were able to get to that level 4 first. So they were in an advantage spot when it came down to that turtle objective take. Meanwhile, Min wasn't able to do much without the Fatal Links. And that was one of the things that we needed to pay attention to into that early game. Whoever is able to reach that first level power spike is going to have an advantage in terms of that objective. And now you can see here with the aggression coming in from RSGPH, they are going to go very heavily onto this buff. Adam Stampede has been popped here. And with that bait, I read and exhort my go for an engage man. Instantly deleted. Min though catches three with that fatal link. Kusei here does not enough damage dealt. But now Panda finds a double. Nas flanking. Oh my god, this is massive. As now, take a look. Only one member left standing from the side of Team Hack. And that is Lola. Four men down. RSGPH in the early game stepping full throttle. Ooh, this is... This is what we expected, right? I mean, we were talking about the drafts and we said this is going to be chaotic. And we are receiving chaotic right now. And right now, Kusei not being able to deal that much damage because he hasn't reached that item power spike with the Golden Staff and the DHS as well. And But he is going to be able to get a lot of gold in that shield, perhaps to help him out. I mean, right now, 2,000 gold lead for RSG Philippines. It doesn't seem like Team Hack is having too much of a good time. Mm, struggling here, Team Hack, early minutes. Minute number four already. Almost 3,000 gold behind. And take a look at Light, the new skin here. Well, if you want the Saint Seiya, you should check it out as well. But again, back to the game. 10 seconds to the second Lord. RGPH, a comfortable lead established. So perhaps they are going to eye that Lord up. Team Hack, my expectation here, don't go for the Force. They should just mirror it, perhaps top side. It seems like they want to go for it, right? Min already opening up vision for his team, looking for that engage that he can. This is risky does seem like both of these teams have their ultimates up. So quite an equal exchange here. Oh, wow. This is very interesting. Irad already going on Min here, trying to zone him away. But Team Hawk, I think they're going to contest this. Yeah. Please do note, Gary is two levels behind here. Phantom Stampede has been part early. No real engages just yet. 
Yeah, that's a waste of, of ultimate there by Carry. Re neutral objective will be secured by the side of RGPH once again with no compensation whatsoever. It's difficult, right? Because the Mardis in general has such a high clearing speed of those buffs and he has a Demon Slayer as well. So he's going to farm around and rotate way faster than Gary, who's actually opted for the Killing Spree emblem. And unfortunately, up until this point, he's only sitting at zero kills. But here we go. Nat goes in for the ultimate onto Lola. Lola is still going to be able to get out. But oh my god, Lydon goes for the play and you can see he instantly gets taken down. And that's going to be another pickoff for RSG Philippines. Don't get Give Joe to light. Man, Forrest is already to this guy's name, right? Looking very, very scary there. The flicker jet kindle lands and bye bye to Masha. RSGPH again showing that they are very comfortable taking the turret top side to add to that team hack. They seem lost. 3,000 gold lead, a turret in the top side. And it seems like RSG, they're looking for more. And on that note, Kuse has actually reached that power spike with the item that he has already secured, the Golden Staff, to increase that basic attack. But now you can see here already an engage happening once again as Min actually misses that Fatal Inks. Light goes in for the top black side. Gary is going to be his target, still able to get away for now as Irad is able to do so much damage. Mon goes down first, you can see the Blazing Duet happening as well as he goes in for the backside. Nas with the Falling Star Moon, triple kill secured by Martis. And again, a 3 for 0 trade once again for RSG Philippines with a 5,000 gold lead. A massive play erupts here in minute number 7, RSGPH. Picking up the triple I read, what the heck is this guy on? The decimation, the uh, skill, uh, placement was just so on point. And again, it just snowballs after snowballs. The neutral objective, the last turtle will be claimed for the side of the Philippines. This is looking so one-sided, right? Team Hack was betting so much on the Leomor to scale and snowball in that early game, but unfortunately, it's not possible. He's, how many levels behind is he? Uh, 12 in comparison to Three nine. levels behind. Wow, that's that's something else. And now, Irad, very, very comfortable here in a 2v1 situation. Oh. And he's still able to get away even yeah, with that damage coming in from Lola as well as Man. One god wave dragon connects on George Smith. Take a look at the blazing duet. It is huge, but he gets taken down there. Not trying to find a kill, but it is going to be a 2 for 2 A Min Panda goes down. Meanwhile, from side of RG, it is going to be Light and Kuse. Let's take a look at the item builds here. Kuse has secured the Golden Staff and as well as DHS. And guess what? He is going to build another damage item there. Win of nature perhaps next. But Gary. Very behind on gold, 4,000 if you compare it to Irad, who has 7,000 on that jungler position. Yeah, that's not great. Wow. And if we take a look at Panda, he's only been able to get that BOD in that early game. It's actually enough for that early damage, but into this mm. point, it's a little lackluster, especially if Team RSGPH have started to build those physical defensive items. It is going to be a very, very tough game here. It seems like for Team Hak. What they need is here for, uh, what they need is RSG to make a blunder, it seems like here, is what they're hoping for, which is quite, um, well, I guess a little bit impossible here. RSG here is already invading again the jungles of Team Hawk, claiming their jungles, and Team Hawk has zero response. Yeah, they need to look for a moment, right? And at this point, two people can make that moment work. Right? You have the Fatal Links coming in from Min, but Man is also usually able to get that Way of Dragon from Light. So, two options for them to take down that backline. Of course, you do have a lot of options to go for. You can go for Julian, you could go for Claude even. But the problem is Claude has that Purify once again, which makes him kind of difficult. Not kind of, actually. Extremely very. difficult to catch. I mean, without even, even without Purify, right, it's very hard to catch Claude. I mean, <laughs> He just adds more job for that Atlas here. Putting, putting Purify, bringing Purify, which just adds more difficulty for the Atlas to land a, an effective uh, Fatal Links. But again, 
all in all. Julian, a hero that is very hard to catch. Cho, a very, very hard hero to catch as well. And that Mardis with that anti-CC immunity, very hard to catch. Our SGPH, ooh, is very, very struggling here. Force out of Team Hack to find a, uh, I guess, a good opening. Again, that Atlas is hard. The Fatalings, landing two, landing three, it's very hard because the amount, because of the amount of immunity that RSGPH has is just, uh, that is also why RSGPH, they're confident not bringing a Diggy. You're right, you're right. Immunity has been a problem here, especially for Team Hawk. And I also want to honorable mention Nas. I mean, so far, he's been able to make so many plays happen, right? I, he goes in for the backline, able to get two, three members with the Falling Star Moon, deal that damage, and also absorb so much damage and give so much impact into those team fights. And I feel like RSGPH, they're playing the team fights way cleaner than Team Hawk. Completely right here. So again, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to wait for the technical pause, <clears throat> let's dissect here. Mm, what can Team Hawk do? to somehow turn the game around. They need to look for pickoffs, maybe. Is that even possible? I mean, right now, you can see that RSG Philippines, they're really rotating as a five-man team. They're not allowing any pickoffs to happen. And I feel like that's the only option that Team Hawk has. If they go for full 5v5, they're just going to push themselves into a bigger hole. As you can see, they're zoned away from their own buff. Look at the way Nas is controlling the jungle. I mean, again, giving information. Oh, Min. To play an erratic Lex, the first lord without contest here. Oh, oh. Min, 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 Min. Oh my god, Jose with the blazing duet. Now, though, quite low. Backs off. Irad here might be caught. Low HP with that sp skill. He is able to escape. He gets out? He get, no casualties on the board. He gets out. With so much damage protruding onto him, he's actually still able to get out. That is the insanity of Irad, of someone like a Martis who has just snowballed into the 10th minute of the game. 8-0-1 KDA. He hasn't been taken down once. And you can see how aggressive he's been playing. He goes in 1v4. He goes in 1v3. He doesn't care. He does not care indeed. As Lola picks up the Twilight Armor, let's see, is it too late or not? Now, Lola, he's a Masha. Take a look at the damage output given by the side of RGPH. With this Lord, I guess what they can take perhaps potentially is one base turret. Well, the tier two in the mid side will definitely fall. Team Hack still defense mode. This is a 9,000 gold lead, Gani, and it seems like it's not going to go down anytime soon unless Team Hawk is able to capture a moment, look for a minor fault in RSG Philippines, perhaps positioning or overcommitment from their side. But look at this. They're, they go back. They're playing super disciplined. Yeah. They see that they don't have any more waves crashing onto them and they don't want to overcommit into anything. And they are still able to just zone away the members of Team Hack really, really well. You can see that there is the focus onto the purple buff, but Gary luckily is still able to get that out. It seems like that retribution came in a little early, but he was still able to get that with his next attack. Gotta say, RCPH, the chance for them to make a mistake is not possible, is possible, but not probable. I mean, the gold deficit is just too high. Team Hack just zoned out here, could not do anything. And if we're, talk if we're talking about farm as well, they are way behind RCPH here. They know how to control the game. They know when to go full throttle, when to also go down on tempo. Yeah, one to two approximately items behind Team Hawk from Team RSG Philippines. And that's going to make a huge difference as we are going to take a look at it. Wow, already so much damage coming in from Kuse, already with the Malefic Roar as well. So even if Team Hawk want to itemize for that physical defense, they, there is already the penetration coming in from that item. Mm, yeah, I mean, Kuse here already with the full build, almost. DHS, Golden Staff, Wind of Nature, and an extra penetration from that Malefic Roar. Meanwhile, Panda, still two items behind from full. Mindal here forced to use that, forced to, forced to build that Dominance Ice for Nats. And it seems like otherwise they are way behind here. So Lord is now up. Let's see. Team Hack, will they contest this one or will they let it go? 
Yeah, and you can see even from Man, he's forced to... But wait a minute! Oh my god! Suppress is going to fall into the hands, but he's gonna get down! X-Sword is gonna be taken down, and this is a really good opening for Team Hawk right now. Light caught in a bad situation here. 5 v one member. He's gonna be the next one to fall. Oh my god, Crusade though. Man gets down as well as Iron finding the double, and it's gonna be a clean oh, house. Though by the bit to triple, Lola might be next. Panda gets taken down by Nas as Nats finds a double, and this is gonna be a triple kill what? by Nats. And RSG will go on top here in minute number 13. And the end is the question. Nine seconds on the Atlas. I guess Team Hack looking at their timers, they can breathe for a bit. What? Two members versus the world. I thought that was a perfect opening as Exort and Light, the main initiators, were taken down first. But the damage and the sustainability coming in from Irad, as well as Nas, was able to do that much. And they turned that team fight around. That was a huge play for RSG Philippines with a wiped out as well. Nas truly is a monster in that lane. Nats is going nuts. Nats is going nuts indeed here, ladies and gentlemen, in our first game of Team Hack and as well as RSGBH. It is a wild, wild game indeed, as Irad is still deathless. He's unstoppable. Man. Now, you can see here already perhaps an opening here potentially. Nats giving damage on towards Min. Uh oh, almost a sandwich play there. Team Blue Hack team still breathing destroyed. for another day. But the base turret bot side actually will be taken down. Yeah, Irat already has the Radiant Armor as well. So even if Matt wants to put damage, he's not going to feel it. But look at this. Light goes in for a cancel onto his ultimate. Team Hack, they're right, trying to bring back the tempo here. Oh my god, here 5v4 Min. Can they defend? Blazing Duet towards the back side. Min instead deleted. Panda almost gets taken down, but Lola here will take a lot of damage, will not survive as well as now Team Hawk. They are in trouble as RSGPH, they strike first in our opening game of this match. RSGPH, GG. A very dominant display of mobile legends here from RSG Philippines. Even though they haven't brought out the main roster, this roster is still as strong as ever with a different set of playstyles.